Hello everyone, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Meg and today I'm gonna to give you guys a much needed, much anticipated, updated garden tour. I've been meaning to make this for quite a long time. I think the last garden tour was like October of last year. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, but it's honestly, as you've heard me complain about in my past few videos, it's been miserable out here. It's just been so hot. I can't even like bring my camera outside because it overheats. As you notice today, it's kind of like a windy overcast day because Tropical Storm Debbie is coming for us. And I also just kind of wanted to do a garden tour before the storm hits us in case it roughs up my garden a little bit. Cause right now it's just so pretty. Everything is blooming and everything is standing tall, but I don't, I don't know like what to expect. We're not supposed to get like most of the brunt of it, but here in North Carolina, we always get like the after effects. We're gonna get a lot of rain. I think we're supposed to get like eight inches over the span of two days, which is a lot of rain. We already have flood warnings and watches and things like that. So I'm definitely ex expecting, you know, my, my usual river to run through my garden and mess up the mulch and everything. So anyway, I'm gonna give you guys a tour before all of that happens. In case you are new here, I'm gonna give you just a little bit of a lightning round about my garden. If you want really specific details, I suggest going back and watching previous garden tours. But I am gardening here in Charlotte, North Carolina. I am backyard gardening. My entire lot size, including my house and my front yard, is just under a quarter of an acre. I haven't measured exactly how much my backyard is, but just know that it's less than that, I think. It, I think a lot of people assume that I have a lot of land because it just looks bigger on camera and in my videos than it really is. But no, it's, it's a pretty, you know, it's a decent size backyard, I think like compared to most people, but it's also, it's not that large. I think it just looks bigger than it is because I have just packed it full of everything that I possibly can. I am mostly, gardening and raised beds all of my vegetables are in raised beds and then i have a lot of in-ground flower beds um, i have 16 different beds they're various shapes and sizes because they have been added over time over the span of like four years or so so my garden has definitely been built slowly over time it wasn't something that was built overnight and everything is uniform and the exact same so that's why it's a little disorganized with how the layout is it's more kind of like you're walking through a maze rather than like you know a really put together uniform garden but that's my style I love that I also have a greenhouse that I've built and I guess I can kind of say I'm like a, a little mini homesteader now I'm not just a gardener I because in the span of one year within the last year I have added chickens and I've added bees so that has been quite a journey and I've loved every second of it. I adore my garden. I love what I've built back here. This is absolutely my happy place. And I have also loved sharing it with you guys through social media. It's that honestly is I think the best part of it all. Before it gets any more windy and starts raining on me out of nowhere, maybe possibly let's go ahead and start the tour. So here's just a little overview. I think from this angle is where I can kind of see most of it. If you'll notice it kind of, I've kind of made like an, an L shape with it. So over here is like my back door that I come out and then I've got beds all through there and then all around here. And this is kind of the centerpiece, the fire pit area. And over here is the greenhouse and stuff. And then if you keep going, I've got a shed here and then we have a little patio area over here with another garden bed. So that's kind of just an overview before we get started, but I think I'm gonna take you guys through here first. So let's walk back through here. We'll start back here. This first bed here, I've got sweet potatoes planted. There's like some herbs and flowers in there. These sweet potatoes are kind of just getting started a little bit late in the season. I kind of dropped the ball on getting my slips in the ground early, but they should still mature before our first frost. Next bed is just kind of an herb bed. I've got a huge lemon balm that I've had here for, oh my God, like four years now. 
and then some St. John's wort that's just kind of spilling out. It's mainly just a whole entire bed of lemon balm. I love, love, love lemon balm. Moving down the line, I have this kind of neglected bed here. I haven't <laughs> done too much in here. However, these are pretty cool. This is my patch of walking onions and they're called walking onions because when they flower, they don't really put out flowers. They put out these brand new little bulbs, I think is what they call. Also, sorry about my, my nail. Yeah, I lost that one. But they put out these little bulbs, and you just break them off like that. And it's a whole new onion plant that you can just go ahead and replant in the ground. They say that they are walking because when these tops get heavy enough, they bend over and they touch the ground and they root themselves and they walk across the soil. Kind of see that right here. All of these, that one's actually already rooted itself. So it'll, yeah, and several of these have rooted themselves. So it'll be like a brand new patch of green onions. These are not really your typical bulbing onions. These are just green onions, but I love that they're kind of an infinite green onion hack because I never have to ever plant green onions ever again. I have a tomato that I just planted in here for the fall. I think it's a Cherokee purple. Um, so that should give me a good fall harvest. We've got some dill going to seed here. I'm actually just gonna get a little bit of it and just sprinkle it. Hopefully we'll have some fall dill. Down through here is an absolute mess. This was an in-ground bed. If you guys remember my last garden tour video, I was talking about transplanting some strawberries in here and making this a strawberry bed and I regret that. The strawberries are taking over. I actually have decided I don't want to grow strawberries in ground anymore. I want to rip all of these out and transplant them into containers like a grow tower or something because they're just very invasive growing along the ground. I don't recommend. This was full of chives here in the front and they're literally just choking out the chives which I don't want to happen. So those are all going to get removed. Down there, that bed, it's just a flower patch. There is a beautiful dahlia down there that comes back every single year. Love her. Moving over to this bed, there's this long skinny bed. I was calling it like tomato alley. I had a bunch of dwarf tomatoes planted there. My romas are suddenly coming back to life. We've had just a tiny bit of cooler temperatures and they're like giving me a second round which i don't know i've i've never really had romas do that because they are determinate tomatoes but they they died back and then they're like regrowing now and they're looking a little wild and crazy i definitely need to stake them up better but look at there's like a new little flush of romas and i am not mad about it at all after I film this video, I definitely need to get out here and just stake everything because the wind is just, I don't know, it's making me a little nervous. It's this little branching sunflower here that was a volunteer. I did not plant this. I have no idea how it got here. A squirrel or a bird, thanks to them. Shout out to them because it's so beautiful. It's, um, I don't know, it has this like lemony color. It's really pretty. I'm gonna go over here and then do a little pivot to show you guys the squash trellis. This is my favorite part of the garden every single year. I love it so much. It's two six by three beds. They're connected by a cattle panel trellis and I grow squash and beans on this trellis every single year and it never disappoints. So beautiful, I love it this time of year because it's just so full, it's full of squash. Um, I've already harvested a few squash if you've been watching my harvest videos, but there are still a few on there now and it's still like pumping out squash every day. There's a ton of noodle beans. It's full of noodle beans right now. I actually need to get in there and do some harvesting. Issues that I have with this squash trellis every year are just the pests. So I have so many of these bean beetles and what they do is they just make the leaves look like crap. They just eat the leaves. I usually just come through and I, I used to be really scared to just squish these with my fingers, but not really anymore. 
So about this time of year, all of the leaves start looking like this. I need to go in and kind of trim them up a bit. On this side, this is mm, kind of empty. There's some stuff I need to go in here and clean up, but I'm gonna be planting some fall stuff, some brassicas in this bed. Moving over to the other side. Got some of the squash that are just growing down along the ground from the trellis. And here is a butternut that one of them just put out. But I also have some peppers that I planted in there, which was a mistake because they're kind of getting shaded out a little bit. But I've also got some eggplant in here. These are giant Marconis in here. I love giant Marconis. Here's another little branching sunflower that was a volunteer. I didn't plant any sunflowers in my garden this year. Well, I think I planted the mammoths that I'll show you later, but all these little branching ones, I didn't plant. And um, they just started popping up in grow bags everywhere all along the ground, and I'm not complaining at all. Got my wind spinner back here going crazy. I love a good wind spinner. I definitely want to get more of them to put just all around the garden. Here in this desolate corner are the bees, but I'll talk about them later. But for now, I'm going to turn around and go back out to the sidewalk because I want to tell you guys about this bed here. So let's just walk back here and turn around. In this bed here, I've got some tomatoes that are just struggling. The tomatoes are not loving the heat right now, and I'm not either. They are not doing so well, but I'm hoping that they'll come back in the fall, just like the Romas are doing. A marigold in here, and then I have this A-frame trellis that a cucumber has died on. I need to take that cucumber out, but I just planted some more cucumbers here at the bottom and they're slowly reaching their way up. So those are gonna be my fall cucumbers. So hopefully those will do better than the summer ones did because I've just, I've had a huge cucumber issue this year. If you have listened to the podcast, you'll know why. So if you wanna know why my cucumbers failed this year, go and listen to the Garden Girls podcast. Got a banana pepper right here as well, right in front of the cucumbers and it's doing good. Oh, I just picked that one on accident. I'll just eat it as a snack because I love banana peppers. Mm. They're so good. All right, so we will come around to the other side of it. The other side, we've got a lot going on. There's this Mexican sunflower. I love Mexican sunflowers so much. I have these all throughout the garden this year. Last year I only had like one or two. I think this year I have five and I love them. And then right beside of it, we have another volunteer sunflower and this one is my favorite. It's so beautiful. It looks so magical. Let me back up just so you can see how big it is. It's coming out of the ground there and going all the way up and just branching out and out and out. It's put out so many flowers. I'm 100% I'm saving seeds from this one this year because I love it. I would love for my entire garden to just be full of this type of sunflower. I have the mammoth sunflowers over there, but and they're beautiful, but it's like, why would you put all that time and energy into growing just one flower when you can have this? You know what I'm saying? I'm actually gonna be so sad when when it's done. I'm gonna be distraught, actually. Okay, coming back around here, I'm gonna show you guys this little area. This baby blue eucalyptus plant that's trying to take over my walkway, but I don't even care. I don't even care. I love walking through here and just doing this and then smelling my hands. It smells so good. And then in this corner, this corner gets a lot of shade, so I put a little patio set here just to sit down sometimes, take a break if I'm out here gardening all day and it's hot. And I have another one of my Mexican sunflowers here. Um, my kitchen window is right through there. So I love every year I plant a Mexican sunflower here because it attracts butterflies and hummingbirds like crazy. So every time I'm cooking in the kitchen or I'm just looking out into the garden, I just see this thing full 
of pollinators and it's just one of my favorite things. Got the pond down here. It is doing phenomenal. All of my fish are still alive and well. We've got sushi, sashimi, and the little rosy minnows. They're all alive. The minnows are actually procreating like crazy. I'm gonna have to start another pond and move some of them over. So I'm gonna spin you guys back around. We're back here at the squash tower, but we're gonna go through here and talk about this trellis. Here is another branching sunflower in a grow bag, but I've got this trellis here and it is connected by, there's this low bed in the ground. It's pretty much like an in-ground bed that's full of strawberries. That's also being changed out next year. Um, I'm gonna make it match this other bed that's on the other side. This is a birdie's bed. So I'm gonna be taking that one out and putting a birdie's bed there so that it matches. But I have a pretty dense planting of strawberries here. And again, they just kind of take over. They're harder to manage when they're growing in ground. I've decided I don't like it anymore. So I'm gonna rip all of these out. There's also some comfrey here and it's getting really big. It's just, I don't know, I, I wanna change this, so it's gonna be changed. On the actual trellis, I have, on this side, I have some beans growing. I need to harvest these, but they're actually, they're getting eaten by the bean beetles. But have some of these purple beans. I did have a grape there, but it is not doing well it's gonna get taken out, it, it has some kind of disease. But on the other side, I have a grape that is doing amazing. Already harvested most of the grapes, they're inside. I'll have to like put in a shot of them if I can. But there's some straggler grapes that I haven't harvested quite yet because they were still ripening, but I need to harvest them. I think they are ready. These are Concord grapes. I used to say Concord um, because here in North Carolina, we have a city called Concord, North Carolina, and it's spelled the exact same way. Um, but somebody from Massachusetts told me that these grapes are called Concord grapes named after Concord, Massachusetts. So sorry for the mispronunciation, but now I know. In this bed that's connected to the grapes, um, you guys saw one of my last videos. I harvested about half of this bed. It was full of carrots, all carrots, and I harvested half of it and I left the other half. I'm gonna harvest the other half soon because there's still a ton of carrots in here. But I just recently planted some fall tomatoes. I need to stake them up. I need to give them um, <laughs> a trellis because I kind of just threw them in here and forgot about them but these are some fall determinate varieties of tomatoes. So sauce tomatoes, I just did three along the outer edge here. So then we'll just move over. We've got this trellis that I just, I got it from Amazon, I think a long time ago and I didn't put it up, but this year I found it. It was in my shed. I like totally forgot I had it. And I just kind of was like, where am I gonna put this? I have no idea. So I just put it in between these two beds. Um, it doesn't really, I don't know. It seems like it kind of doesn't really go, but you know, whatever. I, I love it actually. And I decided to plant passion flower on each side. So I've got one passion flower vine here and the other ones over here. Here's one of the flowers that have just opened up. And these are the, um, these are called May Pops here in North Carolina. They're a native plant and native edible fruit here as well. They are what makes the passion fruit. And I probably won't get any passion fruit this year, but I'm hoping for next year. And in this bed that's kind of connected to it over here, we've got corn and some of it has already fallen over from the wind. I'm gonna have to reinforce the corn because I'm scared to lose the corn. I have cobs forming and I don't want them to fall over and just get destroyed before I get corn. I already have kind of a poor attempt at staking them. Oh, oh no. Please don't, oh, oh my God. Hang in there corn. Besides the corn in this bed, I also have a few, a couple of ground cherry plants. This one is just spilling out and kind of taking over 
Um, ton of ground cherries there. There's another one over there that's it's actually not doing so hot. I don't know what's wrong with that one. Through here, and we'll talk about this little round bed here. Some kind of squash that's growing here. I don't know, it seems like it's not doing like the best. I don't even know what kind of squash I planted here, but just, I don't know, some kind of squash. And then the rest of the bed is peanuts. And the peanuts are doing good. They're still flowering. These are the little peanut flowers, they're so cute. Just my peanut video from last year where I made my own peanut butter from peanuts that I grew. Be sure to check that video out. Then we have the beehive. So here is the beehive. It's in this kind of desolate corner of my yard. I don't really ever grow anything in this corner because it's partly shaded, but only in the summertime is it shaded through here. It's not shaded in the winter or the fall because all of the leaves from these trees will fall. Put the beehive here thinking that I'm in North Carolina. We get temperatures over 100 degrees in the summer and I'm sure that the bees will appreciate the summer shade. But they still get, I mean, they get sun from like 7 a.m. to about two or three. So that's still kind of like seven hours of sun that they get and then they get shade during the hottest part of the day. So this is the front of the hive. So the hive faces this way. It doesn't face towards the garden. That way I'm not encroaching on their flight path at all. Their flight path is out this way into this tiny little wooded area. A lot of people, I think that I live in a rural environment, but I don't. I'm suburban on the edge of urban. This looks like a vast forest. It is not. <laughs> There's actually a school like right there, <laughs> right there. It's so close. I can hear the bell every morning and every afternoon. Anyway, I'm gonna give you guys an update on the bees soon. I haven't made an update video in a few months and I definitely have some things to update you about, but this is a garden tour, so I will save that for later. I guess we will kind of turn here and I'll talk about this bed. In this bed, I've got a couple of things going on. It's mainly the tomatillo tower. So I have this Gardner Supply Company Titan tomato trellis. This is my favorite tomato trellis out there on the market. It's amazing, it's huge, it's tall. It's everything you need out of a tomato trellis. And tomatillos, in the past when I've grown them, they've gotten so out of control like they're just kind of hard to grow because they sprawl everywhere and they're really hard to contain but this year i planted two tomatillos very close together in this trellis to grow together and if you didn't know you have to have two tomatillos to get fruit because they have to cross pollinate they are not self-fertile so if you're growing tomatillos i get this comment all the time on my videos of people saying I have a tomatillo but and it's flowering but I'm not getting any fruit ask yourself am I growing two of them because you have to have two what I do to just kind of contain it is if one of these is kind of poking out I'll just like tuck it back in and it is growing in this kind of contained type of tower a little random zinnia over here. The front here, because there was some extra real estate, I planted some peppers. I think there's a habanero pepper and then like a couple of bell peppers. I want to talk to you guys about this area, but I'm gonna go around the other side. Oh, on the way, I guess I'll tell you about this grow bag. This is a pomegranate tree. It's new to my garden this year and it's doing really well. So we will just walk this way. and turn around. Now over to this part of the garden. We were just over there with the corn and the passion fruit and the beehive. This is another trellis that I have that it's two six by three beds connected by a trellis from Gardner Supply Company. This is a huge lemongrass that is just growing in this 10 gallon grow bag. It's actually gotten so large. I need to use it i need to dry it out for tea i need to do all of the things with it um, i just haven't yet and it's also just really pretty i love i love lemongrass and over here in this bed i've got a little cherry tomato i've got my okra which i need to harvest because they have gotten way too big <laughs> these are not edible <laughs> 
they're way too big i just i haven't yeah i haven't harvested them oh my god look at how big this one is yeah that's that's an edible and then we have the star of the show this is the trellis and this is one loofah plant you guys this is one loofah plant that has covered this entire trellis it's going crazy all of those are male uh flowers up there i was worried about it at first i haven't grown loofah i think i skipped a year i didn't grow it last year but i grew it the two years before that and i forgot how late blooming they are so if you have a loofah plant and it's growing and growing and you're like oh my god i'm not getting loofahs yet don't worry they're just late bloomers mine has been growing all this time but it just now started putting out loofahs everywhere I think I've counted eight so far. One, two, three, four, five, one right there, six, seven, one up there, and eight. There's one over there, yeah. Eight so far off of just the one plant, and it's still blue. Actually, there's nine. I see one over there. I cannot wait to make the sponges this year. There will definitely be a video about that, but just another thing about loofahs if you didn't know they're extremely squash vine borer resistant so if you live in the southeast we have a huge issue with squash vine borer here they don't touch loofahs uh squash bugs don't touch loofahs bean beetles don't touch loofahs nothing touches loofahs they're extremely resistant to pretty much everything so yeah if you've had trouble growing squash try loofah i think i'm gonna have to speed this tour up a little bit because tropical storm debbie she's coming on this other side there's a little patch of corn that kind of failed it's not doing well at all amazing looking herbs i have this sage that's been growing for quite a few years in the scrow bag looking amazing and then i've got this rosemary bush that is about four years old and it's just massive We'll go back out around this way, the greenhouse, in a minute. I'm gonna show you guys the chicken area first. So here is the chicken coop, and then the chickens have all of this outdoor area to roam about throughout the day. They love to spend time near the compost down here. So this is my three bin composting system. They love to spend so much time near the compost that they jump up on top of the compost and they come over here and they jump over the fence and they get into the garden, just like Miss Hazel has just done here. Yeah, the fence is an issue that I'm about to fix in the fall. Um, it, first of all, it's too short. They can fly over it without even the compost. Most of them can. Some of them are good little chickens and they never try to fly over the fence like the Silky. She can't fly. She just, she can't fly at all. But one of my fall projects is I'm gonna get a taller fence and I'm going to extend their area. So they have all of this area, but sometimes I feel like it's not enough. Um, I'm gonna extend it and make it go all the way down here um, around the beehive like this. I want them to be able to forage around the beehive so that they eat the small hive beetle larva for me because I do have a bit of a small hive beetle issue with the bees. Again, I'll talk more about that in the bee video, but allowing them to forage around here, I think will be great for them and that'll just give them more space to roam. It's also been quite a while since I've done a chicken update, so I will have to make a whole separate video. I have a video planned about like my first year into chicken keeping because we're coming up on a year and like things that I wish I knew. Um, so I do have a separate video planned, but I will just update you really quickly. I did let chicken math get the best of me. Uh, yeah, I I'm only supposed to have five chickens. I have 11. I definitely love the chickens like more than I ever thought that I would. They are literally like one of the best parts of my life right now. I love them so much. Actually, I'll try to catch them all really quick and just introduce you to all of them. This is Maple. She is a, she's a Rhode Island Red. She does not like to be held. That's why she's screaming, but she lays brown eggs. This is Penny. She is a Starlight Green Egger, but she does not lay green eggs. She lays brown. 
but she's this she's one of the sweeter ones but she's also a little troublemaker and she likes to hop the fence this is hazel she's the most dinosaur out of all of them like the noises that she makes there's a little like toupee that she has it's so cute so she's an olive egger and she lays green eggs this is winona she is one of my sweetest chickens she follows me around everywhere she wants to get in my lap she just wants to be near me at all times she is a silver laced wine dot and she lays brown eggs this is cleo she is my giant chicken she's a brahma so she is i don't even know if you can tell on camera she's she's a big girl but she's so so sweet she never causes any problem she's like my little golden child and she lays like these pinkish eggs with white speckles they're really pretty this is Mavia. She is one of the prettiest chickens I've ever seen. She's an Easter egger. She was supposed to lay a colored egg, but she lays cream. She's beautiful. She is like this gray color here. Let me like give you a better look. She's just so pretty and she's very sweet, but she is my broody mama. She goes broody all the time. This is Elsa. She is a silked Easter egger. So she's a hybrid chicken. She's a cross between an Easter egger and a silky. I got her from my pet chicken and she lays blue eggs. So she's, she looks just like a silky, acts just like a silky. She's super sweet, super chill, um, but she lays blue eggs. This is Pearl. She is my blue splash Americana. Um, she's also really pretty and she lays bright blue eggs. And last but definitely not least, we have Ginger. She's a Wheaton Moran's and poor girl is at the bottom of the pecking order. She doesn't get bullied, but you can just tell she's at the bottom of the pecking order because she's like always the last one to get treats. She's like really shy, but she lays the most beautiful chocolate, deep chocolate speckled eggs. They're so pretty. I can't believe I was actually able to catch all of them. But yeah, those are my, those are my chickens. I forgot two of my chickens. I feel like such an awful mom right now. Like I, I left, I just totally completely left two of them out. Okay, this is Charlotte. She's a cream leg bar. She is one of my tiniest little chickens. She's kind of Elsa size and Elsa's a bantam. But cream leg bars are like super athletic. They're like little Lululemon chickens. Like they're just very lean. And even though she's a cream leg bar, she was supposed to lay blue eggs, but she lays cream. I don't know what that's about. And I actually don't know how I could forget Lizzie. This is the head hen. I'm pretty sure Lizzie is head hen. She just exhibits all of the head hen behaviors. Um, she's the boss and she's bossy and she has a really bossy personality as well. I, I love her. She's a speckled Sussex and she lays white eggs. Leaving the chicken house now, we're gonna go along this way. Here is my green stalk. It just has a bunch of flowering herbs in it at the moment. I need to replant it for fall, but I love my green stalk. I would show you guys the greenhouse, but as I was saying, it's like a total wreck right now in the summer. I kind of just use it as a shed to put like everything. I really need to get in there and clean everything out. Um, I never use it in the summer because it's just too hot. Like nothing grows well in there in the summer. I usually use it spring, fall, and winter but it is a nine by 12, I think, greenhouse. Um, it's made with the polycarb panels. Um, it has four windows and they open with like a solar opener thing. Um, so they open and close by themselves. And I mainly use my greenhouse for its seed starting in the spring and in the fall and overwintering things. Um, like I'm gonna try to overwinter some peppers this year. I overwinter any citrus or like frost sensitive plants. I grow some fall stuff in there, overwinter it as well. Um, I just try to, yeah, it's basically used for seed starting and just extending life, extending seasons for things. Coming around here this way, we've got just kind of a, a flower patch growing along the greenhouse. All of these zinnias are volunteers. They just popped up from last year. They are all different colors, which I think is really pretty. There are some native plants thrown in the mix here. There's a bunch of milkweed there. 
another Mexican sunflower, some pineapple sage, and some blackberries throughout there. I've got my green tea plants in the back. This is my asparagus bed. It's currently ferning out right now. We've got a, a junk corner over here. This is where I keep all of my like steaks and my extra chicken coop in case I need to separate someone. Here's my shed. I've got some potted fruit trees. That's a nectarine tree. This olive tree that is new this year. A mulberry tree that is new this year. And then over here is the patio. I usually have the umbrella up, but I have it down right now because it's about to storm. This is where we come to have dinner outside or just kind of chill, get out of the sun. Um, and there's also a pizza oven there. So that's like one of my favorite things ever. If you just watched my last harvest video, you know what this is. This is a bed that I way, 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 way over planted. I love my little frog statue over here. He's so wise. But yeah, this bed, I way over planted it. It's, um, it's really hard to harvest things from it, but I have a ton of stuff in here, guys. I've got zinnia, roselle plant. Should have never planted that in here. There's like seven pepper plants. They're all doing great. Like there's so many peppers. If you want to see some things I harvested, check out my last harvest video. This basil that is like the best basil I've ever grown in my life. The variety is called Prospera F1 basil from High Mowing Seeds. I swear it's the best basil hands down. There is an eggplant back there. There's tomatoes that I need to stake up. It's like a whole situation. This, this is just, it's out of, it's actually just out of control. Over here, I've got some grow bags. There's two blueberry bushes in those grow bags. This grow bag is a blackberry bush. I've got a raspberry bush. Um, I've got a dahlia in there. Hibiscus plant over here. More blueberry bushes in here. And there's also some strawberries that I'm gonna rip out because um, they're kind of trying to choke out the blueberry bushes. That probably wasn't the best idea to plant the strawberry. And then over on this side, I've got this fig tree. So this fig tree is new to me this year. I think it's a black mission fig. It's a little droopy right now because it needs water, but not to worry. It's about to get plenty of water from Miss Debbie. So thanks, Debbie. In here, I just have some like random stuff. This is a gardenia bush. It's done blooming for the year. Some jasmine growing up there. And over in this corner, I have my black magic colocasia. This one comes back for me every single year and it's just so beautiful. I love this one when it gets new leaves because the new leaves are so pretty. Like look at that. Love it. I was over here wondering what I was forgetting because I felt like I was forgetting something pretty big and I was. It's this bed here. So we have the fire pit here in the middle and then this is a bed that I just added this year and I decided to just plant it full of flowers. So that's what I did. I planted these mammoth sunflowers. They've already bloomed and now they're drooping over. Um, so they're about to be gone. But this little sunspot sunflower just opened up. It's a dwarf one. It's really cute. And there's a Mex another Mexican sunflower here. And then loads of zinnias of all kinds of different colors. And I have butterfly bushes planted in the ground on each side of it. So it's kind of just like a flower wall. Like that's what I was envisioning. It's just a wall of flowers right by the fire pit. And I think it's really cute. It's actually one of my favorite parts of the garden right now. All right, guys, that is it. I hope you enjoyed the tour. I hope you didn't mind that I didn't go through like every single plant. I feel like we would have been here all day, but if you want to know more about like the varieties that I'm planting, be sure to check out my harvest videos because that's where I kind of go into detail about the varieties. And I have that both on short form and long form, mainly short form. I always list out all of the varieties and where I got them in the captions of my short forms. So if you want to know more about like specific varieties and stuff, just be sure to check out those videos. I had fun on the tour. I'm glad that I got to show the garden in all of its glory before Debbie comes through. Hopefully it doesn't mess it, things up too much, but I don't know. You never know here in North Carolina. It's so unpredictable. Everybody else that's like right in Debbie's path, like those of you in Florida and further south, I'm thinking about you guys. I hope that you don't get hit too hard. I hope your gardens are okay. 
If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Substack, and don't forget to check out the Garden Girls podcast. We have actually been having so much fun with the podcast and I don't know if it's gonna be launched by the time you see this video or not, but I think it will be. So be sure to go and check it out and go binge our first three episodes because we are releasing like the first three all at once. Stay safe in the garden out there. Try to stay cool. Summer's almost over. Fall is coming. I honestly cannot wait for all the spooky vibes and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.